If you aren't happy about paying for the Adobe Photography Bundle and you want to own your photo software outright, there are limited options for Mac users. There are plenty of raw editors and plenty of asset managers, but few good combined asset managers and raw editors. So the presence of ACDC Photo Studio for Mac is a welcome presence in the market. Oh, I first reviewed this software with version 8 back in 2021 when I gave it a tepid thumbs up while acknowledging that its feature set lagged well behind its Windows equivalent. Version 9, which I reviewed at the beginning of this year, offered a few changes but nothing substantial that showed ACDC had much interest in progressing the app. And I gave it a tepid thumbs up while acknowledging that its feature set lagged well behind its Windows equivalent. So here we are at the tail end of 2023 and version 10 has been released. Does its feature set still lag well behind its Windows equivalent? Or is it now the digital asset manager that Mac users have been waiting for? Photo Studio 10 is a full-blown database-driven digital asset manager and photo processor. It works along the same lines as Adobe Lightroom with file management, viewing and processing modules. The interface for Photo Studio 10 is, in my opinion, actually an improvement on the Windows version. It feels a lot less cluttered with a simple triple pane layout and a cool grey theme that lets the photo stand out. That being said, it looks almost exactly the same as the interface in versions 8 and 9, so don't be expecting biometric retina scanning laser buttons. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of the interface. It's nicer than on one Capture One and Photo Lab, in my opinion, and certainly has more indexing bells and whistles than those other apps. I really like the filtering and search functions in that right-hand pane, which enable you to quickly and efficiently find precisely the photo you're looking for. So far, so good. But let's cut to the chase and get on to the new features that ACDC have added to this version 10 release. And the headline news on that front is that there are just two big new features, people mode and media mode. People mode is an AI-driven face indexer that works along the same lines as the tools you're probably already using on your iPhone or Android smartphone. You teach it what the faces of friends, family, colleagues or random strangers look like and over time it indexes all of your photos to automatically recognise those people. It's a useful mode and I have no great complaints about it. It works well enough and didn't throw up an excessive number of false negatives for me. Then there's media mode and I must confess I don't quite get the point of this. According to ACDC, this mode enables you to browse and filter with a new database room view for accessing previously browsed folders. In reality, I found this catalog mode to be far less useful than the manage module and are quite a bit slower too. It looks prettier with a nice masonry display with tiles of large thumbnails of your images, but since you have less filtering and sorting options, it all seems a bit redundant to me. I can't help thinking that ACDC's dev team would have been far better employed adding some of the AI goodies from the Windows version than this somewhat pointless secondary display mode. Once you've selected an image, you can transition into the develop module and begin processing. The raw editing tools are almost entirely unchanged since the previous version. All the standard tools are in there, along with a few nice extras such as the colour wheel. It all works sort of okay, I've no complaints at all regarding the speed of most of the raw tools. Sliders move quickly and there was absolutely no lag in rendering changes in the main window on many of those tools. That said, I don't think ACDC have a very good demosaicing engine. It fails to recreate anywhere near the same dynamic range you get in something like DxO Photo Lab or Adobe Lightroom for that matter. In particular, I found the highlight recovery slider to be ineffective. It alters color saturation such that the image becomes increasingly lifeless the further you push that slider to the right. I think it's supposed to work along the same lines as DxO Photo Lab's smart lining slider, but it doesn't. It's like a 
make my image blander button. If you do want highlight or shadow recovery, then the light EQ sliders are the obvious choice. They work along the same lines as any traditional shadow and highlight sliders found in other raw editors, except they're crap. The highlight slider actually manages to increase the volume of blown out highlights the more you decrease it, and the shadow slider adds a haze-like sheen to everything as you move it to the right. Switching to the standard or advanced tabs in Light EQ enables you to address this issue by individually tweaking highlights across the luminosity range, but it's a step you don't have to take in other raw editors. While testing the white balance sliders, we also discovered that the color balance dropdown can only be activated from a single square pixel in the top left of the little blue button. Click literally anywhere else and absolutely nothing will happen. The dehaze tool doesn't so much dehaze as incinerate your image. Even at low strengths, it adds egregious amounts of saturation and doesn't actually dehaze everything else as much as increased contrast. Saturation, vibrance, and clarity work well, but the contrast tool is stupidly overpowered and if you stray beyond signal digits, you will annihilate your photograph. Masking remains ridiculously primitive compared to pretty much every other raw editor on the market. You get traditional brush, linear, and radial masks, and absolutely no AI at all. Sharpening and noise reduction are similarly old-fashioned. Sharpening uses the old pixel radius and edge masking technique, while noise reduction is restricted to luminance and color noise sliders. In addition to not being very effective, I also found the sharpening and noise reduction sliders that lagged badly, despite the fact that I was testing the app on a top-of-the-line MacBook Pro. There are also no color profiles for lens and cameras, and therefore no automated lens distortion or vignette removal. It's all very old school. While I understand that the Windows software market dwarfs apples, it does feel like Photo Studio for Mac is the unwanted fourth child in ACDC's family of products. And given everything I've said about the photo editing tools, you're probably expecting me to advise you to steer well clear of this app. But the fact is that it's a great little asset manager with a nicely designed interface and heaps of useful organizational tools. It has batch editing, filtering, sorting, labeling, keywording, and yes, even a geolocation enabled map. You can also buy the whole thing outright for 99 US, which makes it excellent value for money and worth the price for the asset management tools alone. The fact is that I and many other photographers process our photographs in a different app to the one we organize them with anyway. Adobe Lightroom is as close as you'll get to a gold standard, excellent asset management and excellent raw editor. But even then, I often process my images in DxO Photo Lab. You can add multiple external editors to Photo Studio 10, as many as you want in fact, which enables you to leverage its excellent asset management capabilities with the best in class raw editors and photo processors. For instance, during testing, I added all of my Topaz AI editors in the external editor menu, along with my preferred raw editor, PhotoLab 7. Before I give this app my full endorsement, I would like to mention one huge flaw with the asset management. It cannot read any Fuji raw files. As someone who shoots with a Fuji camera, this is obviously a bit of a deal breaker for me. But if you use literally any other camera system, then you'll be fine. And you could always use something like DxO Photo Raw to convert your Fuji files into beautifully demosaic, denoised, and camera and lens corrected DNG files which Photo Studio could then read. And I'll do it for this review of ACDC Photo Studio 10 for Mac. Thanks ACDC. See you in a year for Photo Studio 11. Do you use different apps for photo managing and photo processing? If so, what's your preferred combination? Please do let me know in the comments section down below. If you've got value from this content, then please give it a like and do consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and a drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta!